Hello and welcome back to the Think Bigger Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Justin Stoddard. What is it that keeps those of us in the real estate industry, in the real estate industry, from doing exactly what we know we should do? We are going to get into that today at a deep level from somebody who's who's got some some deep knowledge on neuro linguistic programming. I'm excited to have her on the show. Before I introduce her, let me remind you that inside of the Think Bigger Real Estate Group on Facebook. We go deep. We take the learning from just being audible to where you're listening, to where you're actually speaking and engage. It's a place where you can really start to move your growth uh, and your business, your personal and your business growth to a new level. So be sure and join us there. Uh, today's guest, she joins us out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, she's been a very high producing agent in a fairly short period of time. Uh, she leads a great team. She helps other agents through her coaching. And uh, specifically uh, today, we're going to tap into her NLP background that again is going to help us understand what keeps agents from taking action. Uh, Melissa Machat, I'm extremely excited to have you here with us today. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, Justin. This is amazing. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the Think Bigger Real Estate Show, it's one would think that it's all about kind of the brain, right? About, about thoughts, about thinking. And it is to some degree. I, I like to tell people that Think Bigger Real Estate stands for thinking bigger than real estate, having mm -hmm. a successful business and a significant life. But definitely all of that begins within our own brains, right? All of it begins with the thoughts. Thoughts are things. I'm a big believer in that. I believe that before you create anything in the physical world, you first create it spiritually in your mind. And so I'm deeply curious about this because I know that there are times in my own life when I've been impressed with the amount of action that I've taken. And there's a whole bunch of times where I'm like, why didn't I take action? What kept me from that? And I know I'm not alone there. I know that there's a lot of people that feel that way. So I'm really appreciative of, of you kind of getting into this with us. Talk to us a little bit about your background, Melissa, kind of how you got to this point uh, to where not only do you have this really understanding of, of, of the human brain and how it works and, and why sometimes it doesn't work how we want it to work um, and how kind of that ties in with real estate. Absolutely. So really it comes to needing a real job when I moved to Las Vegas in 2009, which, you know, might've been the bottom of the market. I come from a theater and performing arts and dance background. I actually moved to Las Vegas to audition for the shows and uh, moved from Los Angeles. And I decided at 24 years old, I needed a real job. I was tired of working, you know, as a dealer in a casino. I was doing all these side hustles just to pay my bills while auditioning. Uh, I have a very diverse background of random jobs and great stories if anyone ever needs to, you know, ever, anyone ever wants to know. Uh, but that led me to, to getting my real estate license in 2009. I had no idea it was commission only. I had no idea you were an independent contractor and running your own business. I literally just knew I was broke and I didn't want to be, you know, having random jobs and, and trying to make it. So really my work ethic from hustling and just having to do whatever it takes to get by really became a, a great combination for the real estate industry because I mean, literally somebody at my blackjack table was like, you have the perfect personality for sales. That's where you make money. Like that's what got me into this, which I find hilarious that I was the clueless agent who didn't know, you know, you had to build your own business. Uh, so fast forward, I, I got involved in different coaching organizations. I learned that, you know, my sphere was all in Los Angeles. I didn't have friends or family here. So I kind of had to hustle and hit the ground running and get on the phones and door knock and do all the things. And I honestly burned out really hard because I built my business. Things were going great. And I felt like there was something wrong with me. I don't know if anyone can ever relate to this because it's what you just said. I knew what I was supposed to do. I knew I needed to make more calls to get more business, but I would self-sabotage. I would be so overwhelmed and stressed. I was 24 seven on my phone, seven days a week. Uh, my husband always say like, you know, you're never around. You're never present when you are home. You're, I don't know if anyone can, you know, is hearing that from their spouse at the moment where it's like, you're not fully here. And, and when you are present with people, you're on your phone the whole time because you've got to make money. you got to keep the business coming in. So that honestly, six years ago, I woke up and realized I was burned out and completely miserable and hated what I was doing. And the money was starting to come, but it just, it wasn't worth it. It just, it honestly was not worth it. And like, I feel like I'm selling my soul to make money. And I thought that was supposed to solve everything. I thought that was supposed to make me happy. And that led me on a personal development journey, different coaches, mindset, seminars, and 
it it's funny looking back because it started coming from a place of feeling broken, feeling like I just I knew what I needed to do to sell more, but I wasn't doing it. So what's wrong with me? And that led me to NLP, which led me here. So now helping other agents realizing that they're not broken and nothing is wrong with them. Boy, that's really empowering to hear you say that because again, you've you've had some some tr tremendous success, and to hear you say that um, you went for a kind of success at all costs approach, right? I think sometimes we feel the fear, right, and the and the need to do that, and it's really the antithesis of what. I want to help people build, right? Which is not just a successful business. Like I want them to build a significant life as well. And sometimes it feels like those two are completely contradictory. Like you, you actually mm -hmm. have to choose. You either need to be like a monk and have nothing and be really significant in the lives of those who love you. Yet you realize like, but we also need a place to live. It's tough to be a, a good parent when I've got bill collectors calling all the time, right? Like there's, yes. there's this balance of like, how do I, can I actually do both? I, I think it's this paradigm shift for everybody to realize like, no, I can have success and significance. Um, and I'm fascinated how you got to a point, that kind of um, bottom point. I don't know that everybody's gotten to that point where it's like, okay, something mm -hmm. has to change here. I think for a lot of people, what you described, at least kind of leading up to that is where they've gotten to, it's like, you know, I know like I'm, I'm getting by, I'm paying the bills, um, and but I'm not really ever achieving success. I'm, I'm never really, I'm kind of like, I know what I need to do, but I don't always do it. And I would just, like, I'm just going to kind of float along here. And that's pretty unfulfilling as well. Sounds like the point that you got to is which like you were reaching success. Like you were, you were starting to like, hit some big numbers and kind of the financial pressure went away, but then you realize that, Hey, there's another side of life here that I might just lose or just miss out on because awesome. I'm always head in the, like head in the business. Right. Yeah. To me, I hear people say it all the time in our industry where it's like, I just have to sacrifice so that I get to this place. And then when I get there, I'll be happy and I'll work less and I'll achieve whatever this dream life is. But, but the problem is we say it's someday and, and someday is not guaranteed. It's not promised and it may never come. And so I think that was the wake up call for me is I'm and again, a lot of us are those hard worker, overachiever, grind it out, like you said, success at all costs. And I find that sometimes you realize, like, what did I sacrifice to get here? And was it really worth it if I literally left everybody in the path behind me? Because I had to prove, usually, this is where the NLP comes in, it usually comes from a place of proving worthiness. Hmm. I want to go so, deeper on that because I think all of us can relate to some degree to what you just said. This show tends to attract people that can produce, people that that want to get after it, that want to have a bigger life, that 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 want to hustle and go get it, right? Mm -hmm. Yet the other side of us is that deep in our heart, we realize that it's pretty unfulfilling if we sacrifice our family along the way. It was interesting last night, my wife and I were watching our youngest daughter just do a dance party out in front mm -hmm. of us. And I leaned over to my wife and I said, I have a feeling that one day we're gonna look back and say like, these were the best days. Like these are just amazing days. And we're not mm -hmm. like, we've not reached all of our goals, like by any means we're on the path. Mm -hmm. um, but it was like, even though we're not there yet, there was this recognition of like, Hey, we can have happiness right now, even though we still want to remodel our kitchen. Right. We're not doing that sure. just yet. Like there's like, even though there's some things around us that aren't quite perfect, it was like, but this moment can be perfect. So, so I love that. I'm not always like that, right? This isn't this isn't me saying I've got it figured out because I absolutely don't. And that's part of the reason why I was really interested in having you on the show is because I want to get to the bottom of how we how we kind of fix some of this stuff that's that's wrong. So talk to us a little bit more about this NLP concept, what it's designed to to correct, right? You you kind of hinted at it. So please continue. Absolutely. So so NLP, neurolinguistic programming, what I find fascinating is I was introduced to this through scripts, through sales, through communication in our language. Any real estate script you use has NLP embedded commands, you know, what would work better for you Tuesday or Wednesday at four? You do want to hire a great agent like myself, don't you? Like that's all NLP language. And I had no idea there was more to it than just the language of sales. It's actually the language of your mind and your thoughts. And it's the programming in your neurology. So when I say something that you have an actual reaction to, there is some programming on a deep level that is causing you to have that interpretation of what I say. 
And and you can go politics with this. You can go you can go any direction you want to go. If someone says something and you just have like this physical reaction, there is something in your unconscious, there's something in your programming that is causing you to 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 react that way. If you have no reaction, which that's the goal is to just you know, you have a seller that calls you and you see their name and you cringe and you're like, oh, do I really have to, I don't want to talk to them. They're probably going to yell at me or they're such a jerk. And like, they just had a simple question, but in your mind, you played out this whole scenario. Yeah. That's all your neurology. <laughs> that's all the programming going on underneath the surface. So it's completely fascinating to me the more I dug into this. So, so if I understood you correctly, um, we sometimes think of neuro linguistic programming as the words in which we speak. You took it to a different level and said, it's the words I speak to myself, right? It's actually yeah. the narrative through which I interpret the world around me. And yes. so it literally affects everything because it's how we see the world. I mean, I'm, and I totally believe in that. The two people can be standing side by side looking mm -hmm. at the exact same thing and they see totally two totally different worlds based on what's okay. going on in their brain. Um, fascinating. I hope everybody here that's listening to this recognizes the power of that concept is that literally you can change your world mm -hmm. like instantaneously simply by the way in which you interpret what's happening to you. Now it takes time to change that programming, I'm sure, but, but to think that like you can be looking at a different world, a snap of a finger, right. Mm -hmm. Um, is, is pretty empowering. It, it is so empowering. And I think that's literally the best word to use for it is I walked away from that training, my first NLP, like actual certification training. I walked away empowered because it was the first time I understood why I reacted the way that I did based on, you said it perfectly, based on the experience I was having, I was interpreting it a certain way, which was causing my, my behavior, my action, by the way, this exactly ties to what you take action on and what you don't. It all starts with what's going on in our head and our self-talk and what our beliefs are around it. So that to me is why I honestly felt like I was called to start this business and start teaching and start speaking because we think something's wrong with us. We think it's really easy to beat ourselves up and you suck. And you know what, especially in real estate, I need more accountability. I need more discipline. I need more motivation. You know what? Let's, I used to have the most insane accountability. It was a thousand dollar check to my coach. If I didn't hit my, my calls for the day. And I had groups where it was a hundred dollars a day. You didn't hit your 20 contacts, hundred bucks a day. I've had, I've heard crazier things than money, uh, on the punishment that we would give ourselves or someone would give to us if we didn't follow through on what we said. So what kind of fear-based action are we taking? Because it's not about building the business now. Now it's about, I don't want to lose this money. So I better just do what I'm supposed to do. But deep down, you're like, but like, why am I still falling short? And that's where the NLP ties in of like, there's more to it going on beneath the surface. This isn't just you're lazy and you need more accountability. Yeah, Cause that's the label we put on ourselves, right? And we look at the person next to us and say, well, they've got this talent. They had this advantage. They came from this background. Yeah. They like they like they they are in a better spot to do this. And I think it's deeply disempowering when we start to make those that a permanent situation of like, I'm here, they're there. No wonder they're having success because they're like that and I'm like this, right? Yep. Um, and that's deeply disempowering. Whereas what I hear you saying is that it's actually more it's it's easier to transform that and to move to a different spot when you understand the brain. Talk us through how you then start to implement or, or in anything else that we need to know about kind of how the brain mm -hmm. works and, or then kind of move into like how we go about actually changing that to where we start to see the world through a different lens. Again, the promise of this episode today is to figure out what keeps real estate agents from taking action, right? All of us have been there. We've all been to the point to where we know, in fact, I just got off the phone with a dear friend of mine, been a fantastic agent for years and years. And uh, she said, I know what I need to do. I've been doing this long enough. I I can, we the kind of described as like, you know, the recipe, you know, the perfect recipe to create the business you want yet all too often I don't do it. Right. And I think we've all been there. Um, kind of help us understand either kind of more science on the brain of, of kind of what causes that and, or 
how we go about altering that and changing that to where we're Absolutely. not stuck. So this is this is the the first thing that was kind of the eye opener aha to me, and I, I want to share it with you right now. So if you're aware of it or not, we have a conscious and an unconscious mind. So if you've ever been driving and you missed your exit or you were just kind of like daydreaming or you showed up at home and you're like, how did I get here? Like I wasn't really present, which is kind of frightening because you're driving. That is your unconscious mind running the show. When you are sleeping, you don't have to tell your brain, hey, don't forget to breathe. Don't forget to sleep. Like it's just automatically happening kind of like behind the scenes. So that's your unconscious your conscious mind is where we actually make decisions. It's where we set goals. It's where we create strategies. It's where we create methods. So when you say like, how much do you want to make this year? How many deals do you want to close? Right? Like what's your vision for your business? Those are all conscious choices. They're conscious decisions. What I learned is that your unconscious is the, are those beliefs, those doubts, those fears, those you know, that negative self-talk, your self-esteem, your self-image, all that stuff is, is beneath the surface. And so what we were taught is your conscious mind is the goal setter. Consciously, you set goals. Your unconscious is the goal getter. Your unconscious, all the crap beneath the surface, is what's determining whether you actually take action or not. So they say alignment, which I think is like kind of a, a buzzword nowadays, right? Find alignment. I was like, okay, well, what the hell does that mean? I was a very hard headed, like overachiever go mode, right? If you told me slow down and alignment, I'd be like, get out of my way. I have calls to make so I don't owe someone money, you know? Um, so to me, the definition of alignment is when you say you're going to do something and you do it, you're conscious and you're unconscious or in agreement. If you say you're going to do something and you don't do it, your conscious and your unconscious are actually out of alignment, not in agreement. Something is going on beneath the surface. It could be a fear. It could be uh, so many different things that is actually stopping you from taking action. And that to me was like a, wait, what? <laughs> Like, hold on a second. If I say I'm going to do something and I don't do it, something is actually out of alignment. So the NLP, is it kind of a fancy word for your subconscious mind? Kind of the, the like, that's your subconscious mind. Um, is that, am I, am I simplifying that for a guy like me well enough? <laughs> yes, perfectly. Yeah. Pretty much your unconscious is running the show and you have no idea that that's what's going on. You know, I had a really interesting uh, aha at one point. I was writing some really big goals, financial goals. I'd been given the the insight to, to write them actually 25 times a day every morning as part of my goal setting. And uh, as I went through that, I realized at one point that I would write the number down and then very quietly, silently, the silent killer, my my brain would either, depending upon how I was feeling that day, like, I got this or like, you don't got this, Right. And I feel like that either you got this or you don't got this has, that's actually going to be your actual, right? You've got the goal. And then, like you said, the goal getting like the reality of your life is going to show up what that little voice is saying that you can't hear. That's, that's kind of interpreting the world around you, including what you're speaking out loud and including what you're writing down, right? That that's actually, that's, that's what you're setting up to be your actual. So I guess my question then is Melissa, how do you change that? How do you change that, th those beliefs and those, and overcome those fears? Like, okay, we're aware of it now, right? We're aware of the fact mm -hmm. that, okay, yeah. Oh, if I'm really, really quiet, I listen really carefully to what I actually believe about myself, what I actually think I deserve and where I actually believe I belong, right? On the income scale, on the achievement scale, on the significant scale, on the, on the healthy relationship scale, whatever that might look like, right? On the father mm -hmm. scale. Um, how do we start to impact that and change? Such a that? great question because here's the thing. I'm sure you've all heard of like the inner work and working on ourselves. And again, when you're in a high achieving, very fast paced industry, you're like, I don't have time for that. I need to hit my goals, get out of my way. Right. It's, it's very, 
let's be real, real estate can be a little intense with the hustle culture and, and proving and got to do more and make more and status. And, and to me, I think that the key, you said it perfectly, it's, it's almost slowing down long enough to pay attention, to check in with yourself, to listen, and to actually ask yourself questions. It really is all, like real estate's all about asking questions. And I feel like life is all about asking yourself. And I love what you said before. You need to ask yourself more empowering questions instead of disempowering questions. Mm -hmm. Why is this happening is a disempowering question. What could I learn from this situation? What do I need to learn from what's happening right now? Is there a theme that keeps coming up? Is there a lesson coming through that maybe I'm just not, you know, I'm hitting my head against a wall? Okay, well, well, what could this be? What could be causing this? So I have my favorite four questions I'd love to share with everybody because it does start with self-awareness. And what we don't realize is the answers are within us already. We just go so fast, we don't know how to stop long enough to ask or to listen. So super, right now, having huh? super excited about these four questions, you've got me on the edge of my seat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so the first one is literally you actually stop and ask yourself, say it out loud, and see what pops up. Whatever it is, just see what pops up. The first one is what is causing me to feel this way. So I know I'm supposed to pick up the phones and I'm not doing it. Okay, well, what's causing me? And I feel like I'm beating myself up. I know what I need to do. I'm lazy. Okay, what's causing me to feel this way? See what comes up. Number two, what outcome am I avoiding? Well, if I call expireds, like I don't want to get yelled at and feel rejected and feel dumb because they're going to hang up on me or whatever story you're making up right now, right? Or maybe it's real for you. I'm not diminishing your, your, your experience of what could happen. But what if it's, I know for me, I knew lead generation worked. And when I was at my max capacity and overwhelmed and felt like my phone was already blown up 24 seven, how could I possibly handle anything else on my plate? So for me, what outcome I was avoiding when I did not pick up the phone to lead gen was I know it's going to work and I actually can't handle any more business. <laughs> so a fear of success, if you don't have the right leverage and team in place, can absolutely stop you from taking more action because you're already you're at your max. So that's just an example that it doesn't always have to be a fear of failure or a fear of rejection. It could absolutely be a fear of it working and a fear of success as well. So the third question is actually taking your mind instead of focusing on the negative, we need to rewire it and start focusing on the positive, which is not how we're hardwired as humans. Humans are hardwired to focus on what we don't want. Just pay attention to your language, pay attention to what you talk about. It is usually what you don't like and what you don't want or what you're frustrated about. So the third question is, what do I want? And it sounds really simple, but most people actually don't have the answer to that. That's amazing. So what do you, what do you want? Well, I want to grow my business so that I have the income I'm looking for, so I can buy investment properties, so I can pay my bills, so I can, you know, I want to work out, so I feel healthy. Like, what is the actual thing that you are looking to achieve? And then my favorite is the fourth question, which is what is the first step to make it happen? Hmm. Really simplify. Even if it's small, it? even if it's small, what is the first step to make it happen? And everything you said about that, it was interesting. The first disempowering question you asked, which was why is this happening to me? Compared, which is one, which is starting to look around to say, whose fault is this? It's not mine. Like why even looking up at heaven saying like, why is this happening to me? Right. It's kind of the ultimate of like, everybody hates me. Right. Like, mm -hmm. like it's, it's a rigged game against me. There's no chance for me to win. Why is like, why me? Right. This is kind of the ultimate end of the spectrum of that. And then on the other end, there's this, um, the questions you walked us through, which is really having us take ownership, right? Mm -hmm. Everything from kind of gaining clarity of where am I really at right now? Why am I here? 
and and what can I do to change it? Like it really puts the power instead of being this inanimate object in which we're being acted upon, right? Mm-hmm. We are we are agents. Like we're able to act. We're able to to become right to change the situation. We actually empower ourselves to say, "Look, yeah, I'm here. I've got clarity on on where I'm at. I drove the car of my life to this point." which is a beautiful thing because now I know I can drive it somewhere else. And right? it kind of gives you the keys, gives you the power, puts you back in the driver's seat to saying somebody else drove me here and I'm captive, right? I've been taken hostage in this terrible situation. Now the questions you just walked us through, Melissa, really cause us to look at the world differently, look at mm-hmm. ourselves differently and start to re-empower ourselves, give us ourselves a realization of like, wow, I'm in charge here. That's terrific news. Like it's sad at first because it's way easier to blame other people. But, so it's, much easier. But, right, but it's so empowering to be like, and wait a minute, the rest of the story is, and guess what? I get to change. Like I get to dictate. I've got the pen. I'm writing the story here, right? That's why I literally feel called to share this with as many people as possible, because especially in real estate, we go from, you just don't want it bad enough. You're weighing ourselves. It must be me. I suck. Like it's a very disempowering emotion to feel like crap all the time that like, you're just must not be good enough. Maybe I'm not meant for this. How come they're having success, but I'm not. And when I have these conversations and teach agents that hold on a second, if you're not taking action, something is not in alignment, like in your soul, like to who you truly are, which usually means you're following somebody else's rules of success or somebody else's rules of what you have to do to build your business. And most of the time, most of my clients, it is not actually in alignment with the way that they wanted to build their business. Which but again, is, we just think something's wrong with us and there's not. Well, and I, I loved your question number three, which was like, what do I really want? And I think sometimes we, we have to then ask ourselves, is this what I really want? Or is this what somebody else wants for me? Right. Yeah. And even yes. ask like, why do I want that? Is it, is it actually what I want? Cause ultimately I think all of us want to be happy. All of us want to have success. We want to have like a significant life. And it's sometimes the ladder, you know, that we have our, like the wall that we have our ladder up against doesn't, isn't actually going to get us there. It's someone else's idea. I need to, I need to, mm-hmm. you know, build this monster team because I guess that's what makes me happy. And they get there and they're like, I actually don't like, like leading people. I actually don't like this. I actually don't like real estate. I don't like whatever, right? Like, what is it that makes you happy? Such mm-hmm. an empowering question. And I, I, for those that, that know me well, know that my mission and my passion are to wake people up to the potential inside of them and to help them to then to help and inspire them to live in pursuit of that. And, and I love what you're doing here, Melissa. It's super powerful. It's, it's directly in alignment. Speaking of that word with, with kind of my bigger mission, it's fantastic. Thank you so much for, for what you've shared. Um, I want to, I want to jump. In fact, before I jump to the signature question of the show, I want to let people know how they can get a hold of you. If they're like, Oh my goodness, this is resonating in me because I'm the agent that oftentimes I'm trying to figure out what's keeping me from taking action. Right. And we're in that spot's like, what's wrong with me. And I believe what you're saying is start with these four questions, right? When you get to that point where it's like, I know I should be picking up the phone. I know I should be doing this, but I'm finding something else to do at that moment. We need to ask ourselves those four questions, right? Uh, once they get to a point to where they're getting s- some success with that, or they want some more mentorship and help with that. I know you've created a really powerful tool, kind of a quiz to help people really identify what is keeping me. Like, is it that fear of success or that, that fear of like, if I have any more business, I'm not going to be able to either handle it or my family or, or whatever. Right. And I think your quiz is designed for that. Will you tell people, uh, kind of where they can find that? And I'll actually put it in the comments here so that people have it. That would be amazing. So I I did, I created a quiz and it's nine questions. And it's basically what is holding me back from growing my business? What is the next step for me to grow my business? And so when you take this quiz, it, it takes you through, like I said, nine questions and, uh, the answer will then trigger basically a week long email sequence with tips, what to do next. Uh, and, and just to share with you, it's usually mindset sales skills, leadership, or leverage. That's really the foundations of building your business. And most people are stuck at one of those places. And so it kind of, I've gotten some incredible 
feedback and takeaways, whether it's somebody leading a team and the, their agents are just not, we've all, I don't know if you've ever led a team, you've been there. Why aren't people working as hard as I, as I am? Why don't they want it as badly as me? Why aren't they showing up? Well, I hate to break it to you, but that's usually a leadership issue. <laughs> and it starts with us and how we're leading our people. And a lot of the times people are drowning and overwhelmed and they don't know what to do next. And it's because they're, they need a, they need a person. They're missing a person. And what I find really fascinating is out of everybody who's gone through this, most of us, it's mindset. It's us that's getting in our own way. <laughs> All the same principles that we apply to what's keeping us from taking the right action, right? Then you begin to expand your circle and, and instead of looking at others saying, what's wrong with them? You start to say like, okay, and what can I, what can, again, you're re-empowering yourself. You're putting yourself back in the equation here to be able to truly start to, to, to take the car where you want it to go. So it's, it's awesome. And I put the, 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 the link, let me just make sure I got it right. MelissaMachat.com forward slash quiz. Yep. That's it. Perfect. So go there, free quiz. It'll give you some insight into your brain. And again, what's keeping you from taking action. Melissa, let's now go to the signature question of the show, which is this. You are a big thinker. You inspire other people to be big thinkers as well. Talk to us about what you do to grow yourself, what you do to continue to be a big thinker, to expand your possibilities. Teach us. So I fully believe you are who you surround yourself with, whether you actually know these people or not. And the joys of social media is you can follow and get, especially with Clubhouse and all these things, you can get into conversations and listen and podcasts with people who are, are where you want to go. So for me, I am always a forever student. I'm obsessed with growth and learning. I am, I joke all the time that if you tell me about a personal growth or personal development seminar, I'll sign up regardless of the cost. If you try to sell me leads for real estate, I'll tell you I can't afford it, right? Like that's where my values are. Uh, and so to me, it really is surrounding myself, getting myself in masterminds um, now that I'm kind of in this new this new business, not so much the real estate side, I've learned about mastermind groups with other entrepreneurs. And now it's thinking on a whole different level because it's people doing digital businesses and products, and it's not just real estate. So to me, I would say get out of the real estate bubble and see what else is going on with different business owners, entrepreneurs, mastermind groups, uh, I, I'm obsessed with Sarah Blakely, uh, you know, founder of Spanx, female billionaire. To me, I, I just finished reading The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. At the end of every chapter, it says, point to your head and say, I have a millionaire mind. And literally at the end, I'd say, I have a billionaire mind. Millionaire, why am I going to limit myself? Let's go billion, right? It actually pissed me off that the Forbes, you know, uh, billionaire list, like did not have that many women self-made billionaires on it. Anyone who knows me knows I've been talking about this for like years. I'm like, why are there not more women on this list? And luckily it's starting to happen now. We're seeing more and more. Uh, but that's where my mind goes. Yeah, I love to think big and you have to do it through experience, who you surround yourself with, who, what are you listening to? You know, what are you spending your time on? And and I don't want to hear the excuse of like, well, my friend group, like, okay podcasts and you know instagram and all these things have made it easier than ever to connect um even just discovered a show called undercover billionaire i didn't know that existed i'm binge watching it now they took a bunch of billionaires like grant cardone and literally gave them a hundred dollars dropped them in a brand new city they've never been to before and all they literally all they had was a hundred dollars and a cell phone wipe and was like you have 90 days to create a million dollar business that was like, isn't it? like what like what 90 days and just watching how their brain works i've already started like okay if that was me what would i do mm -hmm. if, and they didn't even have a place to live i was like oh they legit gave them nothing <laughs> so things yeah, like a, that stretches you i love it you're right there is i think we used to live in these small tribes right these little communities and if you came from a small community you were a small thinker just because that's who you had access to. And we don't have that excuse anymore. We have access to be literally in conversation with the biggest and brightest minds in the world. And uh, through even if it's just listening to them and, and potentially through 
opportunities like Clubhouse and Instagram and others, like you said, you can be in conversation with these people, like two-way conversation. So um, I love it. It empowers people again, back to that thing of what can I do to change the situation? What's the first step I can do? And I think I'm hoping to hear everybody today takes at least that last question of, if, if not all four, to start to apply. What's like, what can I do right now? right? To improve my situation that really empowers you. Go back and revisit these four questions. Go take Melissa's quiz. It's fantastic. And uh, I'm excited to see the impact that you're going to make in the, in, you know, in the world, Melissa, I'm convinced it's not going to be small. So um, mm -hmm. thank you for your contribution to uh, this audience today. I want to thank you everybody for tuning in and who are tuning in, whether now live or after the fact, uh, my final request to each and every one of you uh, are these three simple words. And they are go think bigger. Thank you again, Melissa, for everything you shared today, helping, helping us do that. Of course. Thank you so much.